you know it's like just shut up already that's what that's what it is when someone is like ripping you apart and you're like okay then if you don't like it then bye just shut up stop telling me like you've already told me a million times like i get it you know yeah. i think a lot of people can relate to that so. what's going on everybody this is tyler posey and what's up it's Sam. And this is Friends Like These with NME. How did we end up working with each other? We ended up working together because we have a mutual friend, John Feldman, a legendary pop punk producer, writer, also in the band Goldfinger, who um, is working on music with you and asked me randomly one day if I could come in and help write. Yeah, and it was cool. It was the first time, you know, other than writing with my own band before and writing with Feldman, that uh, he offered to have another writer come in. And I was like yeah. really stoked on that to begin with. And then he said it was you. And I had known you previously. I remember like during one of Feldy has these Christmas parties like every year, except for this last year because of COVID, where he plays, he sets up a stage, he has bands perform. Whenever Goldfinger's bassist can't perform, I fill in for him, which mm-hmm. is like the coolest thing in the world. So I was playing with Goldfinger and he's like, I'm going to have Femme, my friend Femme come up and sing this next song with me. And so he brought Femme up and all I remember was this like green hair. Because like, I like, she was like in the front of the stage and I was in the back playing bass. Um, yeah. So when he texted me, he said that you were going to come. I was like, oh yeah, I think I know who that is. And then we have another mutual friend and I like seen you with her before. So I was still. Yeah. Yeah, he randomly asked me, like, at the Christmas party, he was like, so, you want to come up and sing Superman? And I was like, uh, mm, sure. Like, I'm never going to say no to Feldman, but I was so nervous for mm-hmm. that uh, that performance. But it was fun. It's just a party with friends and stuff, so it was, it was low-key. But, yeah, you were killing it on bass. I didn't know anything about who was playing with the band, but everyone sounded really good that night. Thank you, dude. You're very <laughs> sweet. That's it. So that's how we got working with each other. And then it was just like really easy. Yeah. Kept wanting to work with you. Thank mm-hmm. you, Tyler. So are you. You're yeah. you're easy to work with. Tyler, yes. what inspired Shut Up? So during the like quarantine and everything, I got sober and before when like anxiety would hit or depression would hit, I would like use substances, whether it was booze or weed or whatever, mm-hmm. um, to kind of like make things better, you know? And I didn't have that cause I was sober and I went through like a bout of depression. Um, and it was the first time really that I had it like affect me while I was like, you know, couldn't turn to any substances. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, it was super interesting and it was sort of stemmed on by my ex a little bit. And so, yeah, that's the song is basically about like sitting with depression for the first time while also, you know, like realizing that somebody's not good for you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. it. Right. Right. (laughs) What was it like with Travis Barker? (laughs) Travis Barker and I, have been on literally like five different albums together at this point. So I was really stoked to have finally been able to collaborate on a song because we've never actually been on a song, but we've been on like albums like Ian Dior, um, like Machine Gun Kelly, uh, The Hana, The Used. Like, I don't know. I just feel like he's just on all this stuff that I've worked on. And um, it's really cool to finally be able to be on a song with him. Um, And I'm just really impressed by him lately. You know, he's working with a ton of people and he's a legend. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was dope for me, too, because I've I the first time I met him was actually through another Feldy Christmas party where he played drums for Goldfinger and I played bass. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And there's this one. You didn't know that? Mm -mm. There's this one part in Superman where it's just bass and drums. Mm hmm. I like turned to him and I was like playing bass and making direct eye contact at him. Cause like, I don't know. I wanted to make him laugh. I wanted him to feel like we got something special going on right now, dude. 
Uh, and so like we've been friendly ever since then. And then, um, yeah, Feldy, yeah. Feldy asked if like, we, it just like came together for Shut Up. I like put it out there. I was like, you think Travis would want to like play in a song? And then he got on Shut Up because like, you know, I felt it was the best song to do it on because it has the future of you. I just wanted it to be the coolest it could be. Yeah. And because your favorite band. My favorite band is Blink-182, so it's a big deal for me. Look, I even have, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a Blink-182 skateboard back there. And then check this out. I have a mini Tom DeLonge guitar right here to match oh my, my big one, which is right here. So yeah, this I'm, guy a, is I'm a pretty big Blink fan, dude. On the Blink uh, train. So the fact that Travis is on my song is uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty badass. Pretty iconic. Pretty iconic. Tyler, why did you want your first solo single to be a collaboration? Or was it planned or did it just kind of happen? Or how did that happen? Uh, it wasn't planned. No, I don't really plan anything. I don't really have a plan of attack whenever I go into the studio. I just like start writing shit, you know? Um, and so this was like maybe the third song that we had written with each other. Each song, I was like, God damn, I want her to be on a song. Like, what happens? I've never really worked with somebody before. So like, is she just writing? Is she coming in to be on a song? What's happening here? But I didn't want to like overstep my boundaries and be like, hey, do you want to be on this song? Do you want to be on this song? Do you want to be in this song? Mm -hmm. uh, so like, I was just like waiting. And it was in the back of my mind. I was like, when is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And then <laughs> felt we, were, we were writing Shut Up. And then Feli's like, fam, why don't you hop in the, in the vocal booth and kind of just like lay some stuff down? And I was like, what, what, do, you, what, what do you mean? What does, that, what does that mean? Is she gonna like be on the song now? And then the more you started laying stuff down to kind of like improvise and see where the song could go, Feldy was just having you lay stuff over me and then sing your own parts. And mm -hmm. then it became apparent that like, that you were gonna feature on this song because like it sounded so good and it really worked with the song. Once that was done, and then once Travis got featured on it, I was like, I think this has to be the first single, you know? Yeah. It's like my solo thing. Um, I'm out of my band now, but it's the same band members. We just like can't play with each other right now. We can't play <laughs> with each other. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, I wanted it to like be like a big, like not a statement, but with my solo thing, I wanted it to be like an impact. And so I feel like this was a good way to do it. So. I didn't know that my collaborations were going to be the first thing. Mm -hmm. would, it just seemed like the right move, you know? Yeah, I think it was the right move. I think so, too. All right, Fem, check us out. <laughs> this is a Topo Chico, by the way, not a beer. Love they it. don't know what Topo Chico is. Topo Chico, everybody, is a brand of bubbly water, and they have different flavors. It's so bubbly, it hurts. Sometimes it gets a little bite. It's got a little bite to it. Them. What makes you say yes or no to a collab? You know, I think it depends on the song, really. Um, I could give two shits who make it, who makes the song. It really just is about the song, you know, and how good the song is. And if I can contribute to the song in a way that makes the song better. Like, I don't think there's any point to adding someone on a feature if they're not going to improve the song. It's like, is it better with or without the feature? And with Shut Up, I already knew that song was a banger when we were writing it. And like you had brought in so much of it already that I kind of feel like we just finished it off and like, you know, tightened it up. But when I was asked to go in the booth by Feldman, like, first of all, like I said, I never say no to him. Um, I felt like really passionate about the words in a different way. And so like, I wasn't sure I wanted a feature on that song, but I'm glad that he, like, I didn't think about it. It wasn't like I had the choice until he asked me to. So once I started singing it, I was like, damn, there's a lot of power in these words. And I felt like that was the right choice. Like I could hear my voice adding more like fire and like passion and kind of like reinforcing the energy that you already had in the song. So, yeah. Sick. Wow. Awesome. Great answer. You do, you add some, you make it fiery. There's like this like emotion, this seething, like not seething because that's angry, but it's just like this, like, oh, feels good. It's frustration, great. you know, it's like, just shut up already. That's what, 
that's what it is when someone is like ripping you apart and you're like okay then if you don't like it then bye just shut up stop telling me like you've already told me a million times like i get it you know yeah. i think a lot of people can relate to that so it's a good song dude good job good job to you yeah Do you think that we'll have any more collabs, Tyler? So we already have, like, so we don't have any songs that are both of our voices mm -hmm. anymore right now. But we do have a song where I play guitar that you yes. have started. It's really good. Well, I already told you this, but you're like the guitar lick god. Like, like he's really good at, like, coming up with licks that are very interesting and also relatable in pop music i don't know i'm just like a fan of your guitar like playing thank you. thank you very much i appreciate it you did say that earlier and i was even thinking about it today i was like i'm good at guitar <laughs> just because you said so though you know um so yeah so i write a lot of guitar for you um mm -hmm. and so we've got stuff like that i mean we're always down to i think to like feature and do other stuff together vocally totally. but at the same time it is i think something really special and i think it's cool to keep it right like rare you know what i mean yeah I right agree. yeah but also like i think a collaboration even if it's not outwardly like featuring it's like we make a lot of music together and we are constantly talking about music and he's playing the ideas and so like i kind of think between the two of us like we're always playing each other's stuff just because you know, that's just what you do when you have similar interests and um, respect the opinion of your musical peers. So it's kind of all collaborative at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Every single song that I write, I like bring to you first. You're like, hey, what's up with this? What makes it better? Same. So, yeah, so there will be more collapse in the future. What do you do when we're hanging out together? Ice cream. Reese's marshmallow shark God. tank watch a lot of shark tank 2020 is a new one <laughs> I got him in the, the, the cheesiest 2020 it's just on it's on Amazon and there's just always a twist and a turn you know yeah I tried watching Eat it last but it was too intense for me I couldn't watch it alone <laughs> um, okay. Tyler's a great cook um, yeah we make food the first thing that we made together was this chicken wrapped in bacon with yeah it was my idea bacon. it was your idea and then we it had like a cream cheese filling jalapeno awesome. things. it was really good we cooked but a lot Tyler, Tyler's a really good cook and he shows me how to do like rice aroni and stuff which I've never made <laughs> you killed it last time did you even know it existed I've heard of it, heard of it? it's good right so and also we make a lot of music together. That's like mostly what we do. Yeah, we make a lot of music, write a lot of music. We have three dogs collectively. So they mm -hmm. kick it. Um, a lot of dog energy, you know. Yeah, we do. We write a lot of music with each other. And then help each other out like with project ideas. We're always kind of like coming up with ideas for content for the future, other stuff. Yeah. You know? It's good. Tyler's a really good actor. So I've been trying to do more acting stuff. And whenever I get auditions, he's a really good acting coach and kind of helps me with the scripts and going over it. It's great. You kill it, dude. The cool thing. We laugh a lot, too. We have a lot of jokes. Hey, Tyler. Question What's up? for you. What's up, dude? I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your EP, about the vibe, about the, you know, like yeah, what, what's, what's the theme? What's the theme? Can we can we get a name reveal? Of course, we're about to drop it right now. So the EP is called Drugs, and the cool thing about it, I don't have a pen here, but Drugs is turned upside down, so the U is like you know like this, and then over the U are two eyes, so it looks like a frowny face. Because drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> so I was, uh, it's a South Park joke. I was, uh, like I said, I got sober during the quarantine and I was originally planning on doing a full length album, but during the recording process, I decided to become a solo project. 
So I was like, let's just split the album into two EPs. You know, mm-hmm. I want to showcase the solo thing on EPs rather than than a full feature. Um, right. So the first EP is really kind of centered around uh, drug abuse, substance abuse, getting clean, what it's like to be clean, dealing with depression while you're clean, dealing with things you've never really dealt with before because you can't turn to any substances, um, how happy you are now, the the tools that you have to kind of like, you know, keep your mental health in check. And it's a, it's a really kind of like thoughtful, in-depth little EP. Um, and I like that. I, what I always love about pop punk or punk is that like, you know, for Blink, with Blink, for instance, all their albums were like fucking, you know, really silly. Take off your pants and jacket. Dude Ranch, uh-huh. which is just realized as semen. Dude Ranch. Oh Had no my idea God. until the other day. Brilliant. Brilliant, right? So like what I think is cool. And then a lot of those songs are like, you know, pretty deep. They're also right. Funny. So it's like it's like ironic. Yeah. So it's kind of how I, this this EP is, you know, drugs. It's not the most serious of names. I mean, I guess it is, but the you right. know, the way that I do it upside down with the eyes, you know, makes it kind of a little satirical. Um, so it's like, you know, it's just it's it's a heavy album, but it's got levity to it. If that makes right. any sense. Um, or it's EP. Heavy. It's heavy. It's got some good shit on there. Um, but it's basic. It's not really a two parter. But it kind of is. And it's just pop punk, dude. It's just fucking straight up pop punk. So I can't write anything else. But it's modern pop punk. It sounds good. Fem, <laughs> talk to me. Ch- check this out. Talk to me, all right? We're all waiting for new music. Mm-hmm. I know I am. You have the deluxe version of How to Stop Hating Yourself coming out soon. Yes. Talk In approximately a day. Um, what do you want to know about it, Tyler? You want to know what the uh, vibes many, are? What, what, what is, is it like another full EP? Are there, is it like a smaller, is it like an, is it an album? What's the vibes of the songs? Are they the same kind of vibes? Do you have any features? So two extra songs for everyone to kind of wrap up. Everyone's like, is there going to be a part two? Is there going to be a part two to how you stop hating yourself part one? And I'm like, uh, no, nah, because I don't want to think about hating myself anymore, but I'm going to give you a part 1.5. So I'm going to give you a little extended two extra songs. One of them is called Congratulations. I originally wrote it for Dixie D'Amelio. And then I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm keeping this shit. It's a banger. And then I, I made it a little different. I made, I feminized it. And then I wrote a song called American Beauty like two years ago. That was a smash. And I just reworked it um, with this dude, Pat who's an incredible producer and Remy helped write a lot. And then Nick Long, who everyone knows helped write, you know, tickets to my downfall, the King princess stuff. He's a legendary writer. So I kind of just reworked that. And I'm really proud of both these songs. They're kind of like, um, it's a different vibe for me. And it's a vibe that I like really want to go into because there's a lot of energy and passion, a little bit more aggression. I feel like, I've been a little sad emo girl for the past few years and now I'm kind of just like pissed about shit and I want to represent that sonically and in a relatable way that's like fun and energetic because like when the live shows come back I want fucking mosh pits you know what I'm saying so that's where we're at we're heading that way I love it dude it's a big statement you're making with just two songs I know Tyler it works dude it's fucking good they're Thank my favorite you. songs that you have. Aww. American Beauty is so good, dude. It's crazy. What motivates you as a musician? Lots of things. So originally it was Blink-182. You know, they really inspired me to like, everything about them was just so dope. Their style, how funny they were, the, sh- the serious shit they sang about, their talent. Yeah. So originally, originally it was that. And then um, I think through that, I just realized that music was always in my life. It inspired me somehow. I just didn't connect to anything until I found Blink and Punk. So I was like, music's always like been in my life and it just fucking moves. I don't know. I just don't want to stop doing it. You know, I can't. I think it's spiritual. You really love it. Like, I'm going to be real with you. 
you really love it in a way that I haven't seen a lot of people in my industry love it. Like, really? it doesn't matter who's listening. Like, you could just be in a vacuum making shit. Like, I can tell how much you love it. And that is inspiring to me as an artist because you create, like, for the joy of it. Do you know that's, what I mean? I do. Yeah. That's what, that's what I, it's like. That's why it's hard to, like, say what motivates me because, like, I just have to do it. <laughs> I connected to it at a really, really, really early age. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really deep. I can't not do it. So I don't know. I mean, but what motivates me to write, you know, I guess is like, it was funny. I could, I had this writer's block the other day. My friend was like, uh, have you been really happy lately? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you can't write music when you're happy. Mm -hmm. So like sad shit, like really is easy to write about, you know, uh, right. Just, you know, loss, substance abuse, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so like just trying to be real, you know, and really like personal on that end about my life, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. What motivates me is that it's just like it takes me to like the spiritual sort of meditative place. What's your what's your favorite track by me? I think it's a track and I think you know which track it is. It's not out yet. Okay, sick. All right. I do know what it is. It's called Happy Pee Dance. <laughs> it's called Jim. No, I'm joking. It have a song <laughs> called Jim. It's a banger. It's an arena rock banger, but that's not the song. It's actually a song that Tyler has. The name is undetermined, but it's, I think it's, I don't really care about it. Is That's what I think the title should be. But yeah. I know that's not fair for people watching. So the song that I love most that I've heard. Yeah, should I like, sneak it real quick? I really like this mess like a lot. Like I'll put yeah, that yeah, on yeah. just jamming in the car, the lyrics. It's got a lot of energy. Um, that's my personal favorite from the past Tyler Posey stuff, Five North stuff. Thank you. Here's, here's that song real quick. Really quick, really quick. It's so fucking good. All right, I'm gonna go to the chorus now. All right, all right, that's it. Okay, cool, thank <laughs> you. I'm glad you like that song, I like it too. Um, I don't know, dude, I've, uh, I like fell in love with Shut the Fuck Up when I first heard it. And- mm -hmm. I noticed, that really, you posted that, really, that song like, so many times. Just really made me like, wanna like dive into your music and, and then you started sending me all your new stuff and a lot of like unreleased things. And those, a lot of those I think are my favorite. Like American Beauty, the one that's coming out soon. I don't know, dude. All yours, I love your songs so much. Thank you, Tyler. The new ones, the unreleased ones are so good. Okay, Tyler. What? What do you want your music to mean to people? I think I want it to be really relatable. You know, I've been through a lot of weird kind of things. I think a lot of different people have. And I think I just want it to be like um, people to feel not alone you know yeah yeah you know but then there's like also some people who sometimes when I listen to music I'm not really listening to the lyrics like that in depthly so I just want the song also like just to sound really great and driving and tell a story just instrumentally you know and then when you dive deep and listen to the actual lyrics you're like whoa this song means something yeah it just sounding really really cool and like like a story already I don't know if people are like, you know, fans of me, I kind of like, like to be really honest through my music, you know, make right. them feel like, you know, like they can connect to me somehow. Um, I'm just trying to bridge the gap between celebrity and people who aren't celebrities. You know, they think that like, they're so out of reach, but you know, just a normal person trying to get by. That's what everyone is, you know? So I want everyone to feel like we're all equals. Yeah. While washing in your room, in your underwear. So what about you, dude? What do you want your music to mean to people? Um, growing up, my favorite band, one of my favorite bands is Radiohead. I used to listen to them obsessively. And that band, every album became the soundtrack to incredible, weird life moments of just like growing up at like kind of 
bookmarked certain things. Like I can listen to a song and be like, holy shit, that's when my cousin died or this or that. Like there's all these moments within those songs or my first love, that's the song I put. It was, and it's all Radiohead, you know? And so like, for me, I feel like I really just want to be there for everyone's like life moments and like have any song that I have can fit into a happy time, a sad time, being in love, being alone in your room, being 13, being 18, being 20, like whatever the marker is in your life. Like, I just hope that I can support and be there, like to give emotional energy to people, whether it's sad, happy, introspective. I just want to like be there in people's lives. And like, I feel like I want to help them or just be like a support, you know, through my songs and like my words. So like, if I do that in any way, I feel like mm, everything I wanted is accomplished. Um, yeah. Yeah.